Hi all, Bynes here from Osbury SA Bantams. Uh, today we're going to be having a play with this D5. Uh, this bike was picked up at the recent Scammells auctions over in Adelaide by my brother. Uh, it's a great survivor bike in really, really good condition. Uh, with a bit of a cut and polish, I think it'll come up really well. We've had already had a bit of a I play with it. We've already done things like check the fuel tank, cleaned it, it had residual oil in it, cleaned all that out, pulled the screen and the fuel tap, cleaned all that, new fuel line, inline fuel filter, clean the carby and um, we'll see how we how we go. Uh, don't know, have no idea how long it's been sitting for, but generally the bike is in pretty good condition. Everything works, headlight even works. We've had it We've had it running, it's not running too well. We think it may be having an ignition problem. So tomorrow, in order to isolate what the problem is, because it could be crankcase seals from, from sitting, we're gonna drop an electronic ignition unit on it, and that will eliminate any potential ignition problems. So I hope you enjoy it. So, uh, original YPAC ignition out, rotor out, and that's what I found inside. Nice and clean, uh, certainly no seal leakage there, so now it's time to go and throw a CDI unit on and see how we go. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I'm just finding my, or setting up my piston the correct distance before top dead center so I can put the rotor for the CDI on. And while I'm here, I haven't had a look in the... Wow, okay. So I'm reading the plus 40 thou printed in the top of the piston here and there's not one skerrick of carbon in there. So that's a brand new piston and this bike has not done any running, I don't think at all. It's like brand new. And I reckon those seals are too, so we might be on a winner here. Great stuff. So right, uh, sorry, <clears throat> CDI stator on now. Um, I'm looking at some of this wiring up here too. I reckon we'll rewire this bike and you know, chances are, I think we will end up fitting a, an electronic ignition to it. But what I can do, and what I used to do when I first built the, started building the electronic ignitions, is I used to build these on uh, an original stator plate. So, because it's my brother, what I'll probably end up doing for this bike is um, putting a, building a, a um, CDI for it on an original stator plate. Now this unit here is a unit that I, it's just a standby unit. Sometimes I send it out to people just to try out on their, on their bike just to see whether They've got ignition problems that they're trying to resolve and um, it just, it does make it a bit easier because you can be chasing around, you know, basically electrical or ignition problems manifest themselves like carbon problems and vice versa. So it's good just to fit up and eliminate some of those issues that you get. Now I'm actually wondering if they rebuilt this engine and the ignition unit that is in it has got mainly new parts and it still didn't work properly, which is, that happens too, so 
It'll be interesting to see how it runs once we get this all on hooked up. electronic ignitions to bands. Second kick, but we had it running yesterday on the points, but there you go. Perfect. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the refurbishment of the bike. So I'm going to check basically everything. So that means wheels off, check wheel bearings, headstand bearings, uh, pull the forks out because we've got to put fork gauges on down there and clean, clean up the rust a bit on the on the fork sliders. They actually felt pretty good uh, before, so I'm not envisaging any major issues there. Um, and then, uh, obviously, the tank will come back back off, and I think I'll I'll will rewire this, and I'm, I may even do it. So in order to get the cable through, we're going to have to pull the back wheel out anyway, and it's going to be out for us to have a look at. Um, brakes and bearings and the, and the like. So yeah, we'll just keep progressing with it. But very happy that it just runs so smooth. So looking forward to getting it out and having a bit of a ride and see how, see how it goes through the gears yesterday. Yesterday when we had it running on points, it was just crap. It really was. But um, yeah, no, very happy, very happy. So we'll just keep progressing things. Okay, one, and I apologise for doing a bit of the walk around and just holding it. It's not as steady as on the stand. But, yeah, standard D5, Moraine all over, and obviously this bike, at some stage, someone's, well, they've painted the tank with a brush because the brush stroke marks are still in there, put a little BSA leg on the side, and they've done the little bit at the at the front um, just to personalise the bike a bit. I actually think it looks really good. Uh, and I think my brother's going to leave it that way because, I, I mean, I know you can colour match the, the paint, but, um, yeah, it just looks a little bit different. It's, interestingly enough, and excuse me for just walking around with the camera, on the number plate holder is um, Taylor's. Now, uh, for those that are into the band and well, Taylor's in Adelaide were a really big uh, BSA dealership and sold an awful lot of Bantams. <clears throat> And they also developed the D3 pastoral. So um, for those of you that are watching in the UK, uh, this mob actually modified a Bantam as the first sort of pastorals slash Bushmans. And I often wonder whether that influenced BSA to go on to make the pastoral range and the Bushman range. So, so yeah, it's a... It's a cracker bike. Someone's painted the cases in something like a shellac or something like that that will have to be cleaned off. But generally, this bike is in this bike is in great near great original condition. Okay, just to show you how original this bike is, still on the forks. You can just make out the transfers for the patent number on the on the forks. It's still there, and I've never seen that on any D three forks. You can just barely make that out there. How cool is that? Okay, we're getting the fork cap off just so I can check out the um, um, fork seals. See, and I'll see if the bush will come out. And the bush has come out. That certainly doesn't have excessive wear on it. It actually looks pretty good. Yeah, fork seal's a little little bit hard, but the but the grease the grease in here and everything's just like spot on. Like it's not aged or anything like that. I mean, I'll just wipe it out and I'll put I'll pump new grease in it, obviously, but uh, and I'll change these fork seals out. Uh, but this is either 
hasn't this bike either hasn't done much work or it's a really really well maintained bike so they're all our front brake components and as you can see by those brake shoes they're freshly rebonded they haven't been used so um, I'll put uh, seal bearings in this and we'll put it all back together all right so what we've decided to do is we've decided to change out the fork bushes while we've got the wheel out and we've gone this far so a couple of things to remember when you're knocking out your fork bushes up in the fork leg about or about here somewhere is a ring that's soldered in now a lot of people just put a bar down there find the edge and start whacking with a hammer and what inevitably happens is that ring being only soldered in it shears off and comes out with your fork bushes so in a sec I'll just show you what I do so it's something to really be aware of if you're going to use a bar feel down the side and you should come down another three quarters of an inch before you hit the edge of the fork bush before you start whacking it with a hammer so if you do knock it out and you want to put it back in but the only thing I can think of that that really works is using uh, making sure your fork leg is absolutely clean free of rust put your ring back in have something hold it in position and use some 600 grade Loctite to Loctite it back in because you, you need that ring in there otherwise your fork bushes or your top fork bush will migrate up and so, so will your bottom one just something to remember all right, so this is the layout of our of your um, fork cap, your seal, your lower bush, your distance piece, your upper bush. And this thing here is a plug that I've made with a shoulder on it that fits neatly into the end of the bush, but it'll go inside the diameter of that sleeve that's up in the fork. So I can drop that down, have a look down with a torch and make sure that's centralised, and then I hit that with a hammer. So you can always make something up like that to get everything out. Now a couple of things to remember too, depending on what forks you've got, these slots here are to allow the grease in to your fork slider. So when you're reassembling them, make sure that they line up with your, with your grease nipple hole. Okay, what we're also going to do uh, while we've got the bike disassembled, you can see all the rust on the, on the handlebars. So we're going to take all the handlebar hardware off Go and put it all in the wire buff and give it a, a buff up and then put it back on. It'll be far easier to do it disassemble than it is on the bike. So um, it'll come up all right. And you can see over here, we've just done the top nut. Well, you can't see the one on the other side, but just giving them a bit of a buff. So it brings them up really nice. All right, so what we're going to do is going to put the front wheel back in. Now, people like me generally have troubles getting this in over the swage. It's on the fork leg there. So the easiest way I've found to do it is to get someone to help you, like I have now. And on the left hand uh, fork, you take the fork top nut out of the top and push all that all the way up. Then that gives you the ability to, to lift your lift your wheel over this over this way here. So I'm just putting the wheel nut back on the other side. Line this up and put back down. Wheel nut up. And that's it. So we'll get the mud guard mounted up. It's just cable tied up at the moment just to keep it out of the way. And then I'll show you how to do the fork gators. Okay, scourge of the banner motor, fitting fork gators. So this is the easiest way I've found to do it. So start off by rolling the top lip of your fork gator over like that. Tiny smear of oil. Then make sure you wipe your hand. Power onto your heat gun and don't cook it, just warm it up. And then just roll it back over. So you've got the whole lot on. Take the twists out of it. And 
and that's how you do it. Simple as that. Okay, so we've just dropped the back wheel out and this is what we've found and this is the very reason I think you should get rid of these open sided bearings and change them for sealed bearings. They don't cost much money and you don't have end up with this issue with grease going absolutely everywhere so it's all through the brake shoes. I mean look at the amount of grease here on the brake bracking plate and where it's flung out onto the, the friction area of the, of the hub. Um, all our bits over there, speedo drive, chain tensioners and everything like that. So we'll get this um, all scrubbed and clean and reassemble with a new set of sealed bearings. Okay, we've got our front end back on and as I, as I said before, we've got the back wheel out. We've got some electrical problems with continuity between the um, headlight and the tail light. The tail light's not working. The brake light isn't working either, but we do have continuity down under the switch. So while we've got the back wheel out and I'll possibly have to run new wiring, which sits up inside your, your rear wheel. So now's the absolute opportune time to do it. Um, but other than that, things are progressing really well. Alright, so uh, we've isolated what our tail light issue is, and our tail light issue is this switch is broken. So in the internals of the switch, it's not providing a power supply back all the way back to the tail light. Now you'll see over here, they've actually put a high low beam switch on there. So this switch is actually high low so I think at some stage the switch is broken and they've gone and they've fitted the handlebar mounted switch so um, right here they're the two feeds one goes off to your tail light one goes off to your speedo light so I'm splicing it into the power feed which is this line here which comes from the switch and over to the handlebar switch so hopefully we'll get all the tail light working but other than that so far so good all right, we've got it all back together and we're going to go for a start. Just tickle the carby up. Sorry about the rain, but it sounded staticky. adjusted the needle, got it, it was running a bit lean before. Um, because this engine is actually fresh um, and it's been raining and the, and the track's pretty wet, we're not, we're not running it, but we've actually got to run the engine in and do a plug chop and just check to make sure that we've got this running all right. Um, headlight globe was broken, that's why that wasn't working, but it is now. Um, so everything's done on this bike, we're just, we're just going to um, ride it for a bit uh, around here. Uh, my driveway is actually 300 metres long, so uh, we'll just run it up and down here, make sure we've got a good plug colour, adjust brakes a bit more. They're, because the brake shoes are new, they feel a bit woody, so we'll, we'll see there. Um, and then this uh, seat off, seat will go in and get recovered, and then this bike will be ready for roadworthy. So, so everything done on this bike was done in a day and a half. So, um, pretty good effort, pretty happy, it took 
really crisp engine that's really nice so I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, if you like it I think you press subscribe or something like that they do on YouTube so anyway thanks very much we'll see you later Thank you.